welcome back. I have moved my Wednesday night art night. Whoa, I got a volume in here, sorry. <laughs> I moved my Wednesday night art night to Wednesday afternoon at one o'clock. So I'll have to think of a new name for this little show. But I wanna thank you for joining me. And today I'm going to paint some resin vases. I made a really cool resin vase last week and I'm gonna show you and kind of show you how I did it. I'm gonna make another one. But before that, I'm super excited because I received my edition of Fluid Art Magazine. And if you have not heard about this magazine, go to fluidart.co, I think. Just give it a Google, Fluid Art Magazine, and you can subscribe. And for the next few months, it's actually free. So you can get a free digital download. So let, let me show you real quick, because I'm like super excited. Let's see. Okay, here is the website. This is my first time doing a screen share also, so um, bear with me. Let me see, if we scroll, here's the magazine, here's my copy, and right here, page seven. That is a tutorial I wrote. The video is on my YouTube channel, and it's a resin glass vase tutorial using some fall, hull, holiday colors and here's an access to the video on my youtube channel but i'm super excited to be part of this magazine i have uh, followed it for several months now and it's it's really exciting i'm very proud of Lindsay and what she's doing so oh let me see it's oh it doesn't give me the website there so i the website is in the description of this video so uh feel free go grab your copy and then if you subscribe she will send you an email when the new edition is up. So if you are an artist, go contact Lindsay to see about writing a tutorial or you know showing your art. She has competitions every month to see who can be on the cover and she has a Facebook group also. So it's a very fun community. So I'm very excited to be proud of it, part of it as you can tell. So go check it out. Okay, so now for today's project, the resin glass vase. It's actually a little two part. Here is the glass vase that I made last week. And I'm sorry for the glare of my lights. I'm still trying to work that out. But this is a glass, this is actually a glass vase that my mom had at her house. And when we're cleaning, I was like, hey mom, can I have your glass vase? I wanna paint it. And she said, yes. So um, you can go get these glass vases at um, Dollar Tree, Goodwill, Michaels has them. You know, Goodwill has them for two, three dollars, Dollar Tree, Dollar Stores, dollar, dollar twenty-five, whatever their new price range is right now. Um, but they're not expensive and they turn out beautiful. But this vase, I actually used dimensional paint right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, before I applied the resin. And I'll show you how I did this vase. And it's a very it's a good size. And I also, at the same time, made this tray sun catcher, and it's a hot, look how cool that is, it's holographic. In this situation, the lights are awesome because they catch the holographic, you know, just solid on one side, Woo! and then holographic with a little flower and print. So I'll show you how I made these, oh, let me get that out of the way, this is the vase that I made for the magazine. Fluid Art. And it's with resin and alcohol ink. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you for your magazine. At the beginning of this, I did show the link and the pages that I am on. So I, hopefully more subscribers can come to you but i think you did a great job with this magazine it's beautiful i was browsing through it this morning and later today i'm going to go read the rest of it so i wanted to show you a little something with this vase let me switch views okay here is the vase and can you see the inside right here this is the resin that got stuck to it and I just wanted to show a really quick tip because I'm not gonna be able to show it with this video because this the one I'm gonna to do today needs to cure. 
So all you do to get that out is you take a straight edge very carefully without hurting yourself and just pry it up in here. Whoops. And see, it just starts popping right off. And sometimes you need to work at it, but you will get resin on the inside, as you will see right here, see? And then it's nice and clean on the inside. So there is a, a little bit of cleanup work with these vases. And I just wanted to go show you now before I forget. And you just peel it off. And then it looks a lot cleaner on the top because you can't see that weird shadow. But that's that. All right. Let me clean up this mess real quick. So to get started, I have my glass vase. And this is the one I got at the Goodwill. It's $2.99. Hi, Kendra. How are you? Thank you for watching. Stop it in, saying hi. And with all my glass vases, we do need to do some cleanup. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with you. I thought I could prep some of this, but I said, nah, you guys can just do it with me. Right here is 91% isopropyl alcohol. I'm just pouring some on here. And then I'm just going to clean the dust. And I did get this vase yesterday, two days ago, at Goodwill. And um, Goodwill, if you don't have one in your area, it's just a thrift store. Um, I don't know how global they are. I think it is just a USA thing. But just go to thrift store, discount market, look for glass vases. And try, if possible, get them lightweight. You don't want one that's top heavy because it is going on the tumbler turner and it can cause some problems with the rotations. So I'm just going to let that sit a moment. It's all clean with the dust. And this part is part of my tumbler turner. And that's what this is right here. And I got it on Amazon, and the link is on in the description below. And as you can see, I made a mess with it. This is from Old Projects. I put wax paper down thinking it'd catch the resin, which I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but the resin stuck to the metal, and then this paper stuck to it. So now it's forever part of it. So now what I do, I take a piece of acetate, or a piece of plastic, just anything, just to cover, because we know resin does not stick to plastic. So that way, this will help catch the drippings. I also put, oh, I got a little piece down here. This mold I got, it's called Molds and Shapes. And the link is also in my description. You know, this is a silicone mold. But look, it's got holographic imprint. So that's how I got the holographic look on this. I just poured my resin right into it. Look how awesome. Sorry, but that's just awesome. I am going to use this as a tray for that glass vase. So I just set the glass vase on here. But you could drill a hole, use it as a sun catcher. But do not put it in direct sunlight because resin can act like uh, glass and sunlight and glass don't really mix. It kind of makes it as a magnification and it could start a fire. So just keep that in mind. If you're gonna do sun catcher, do it somewhere that can catch the sun in the shade. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here on the bottom of, whoop, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit I didn't realize little droppings were getting in there. And just be very careful with this type of mold. You can scratch it super easy, and then that imprint will go on it. So just very carefully. I'm just going to get the little specks. And I'm going to set that there. I'm going to set this aside. So we're almost prepped and ready, right? 
So in the comments, if you're hanging out with me, thank you very much. Stop by, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. And let me know if you've done resin before. Because there are some specific safety rules that you should follow for resin. And we'll talk about that as I mix my resin. I have a mixing cup. This is a one quart cup. And I am going to mix about 12 ounces of resin. The glass vase takes about two, but this takes probably eight to 10 ounces of resin. I haven't officially measured it, but I do like to mix a little more resin than I usually do because the worst thing you can do is run out of resin mid project. So I am using, this is a one-to-one -one resin. So you have a part A and a part B. The part A is the resin and the part B is the hardener. And you want to be very careful. Actually, I'm going to move this to side for a moment so I can show you. You just want to be careful when you're measuring. So it's going to be a little hard for you to see because I need to see the measurements. But I'm going to pour about six ounces of this resin into this cup. And it is a super big cup. My silicone mixing cups, I'm really bad about cleaning them. So I had none for today's project. <laughs> okay, that's six ounces of resin. And then now we're gonna do six ounces of the hardener. And remember, it's one to one. And I do like this epoxy. You can use any epoxy, any resin that you want. Um, I would decide if you're new to resin, just use a one-to-one -one resin. Don't try to do the two-to-one ratios. Don't try to do the deep, deep casting, any of that. Just it's a simple one-to-one. -one. So I did link this resin in my description. I've been having a lot of luck with it. And you just stir. Now, stirring will cause air bubbles, and that's okay. I am fine with the air bubbles. Some artists despise them, can't handle them. But as with my project, as I'm working with it and the colors, the air bubbles will be gone, so I'm not too concerned about it. Now, the directions on this resin, check in comments real quick. I know, resin, resin's fun, super fun for beginners. But you just gotta use some common sense and safety precautions. So reading the directions on the bottle, it says mix equal part resin and hardener. Stir each part, then stir together three to five minutes. So three to five minutes, we're gonna stir. And I've been doing this for a while now, so I can tell when it's mixed because it's not gonna be cloudy. And you kinda will see it's almost like stringy-like material in here. That's just the resin mixing. When that's gone, it's ready. So you can set a timer, which if you're new, set a timer, three to five minutes. It says the surface must be dry and free of dust, which is what we did. We dusted our glass vase and I picked the flex out of my mold. And it, it's recommended to wear protective gloves wear your gloves, use soap and water to clean, and this resin has a 30 minute work time, 24 hour cure time. There are resins out there that have like a 45 minute work time, um, different variances, 30 minutes with me is fine. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, mix in, just keep mixing, You're just mix as I mix. Going to scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, scrape my stick. Now safety. You want to be very respectful of resin. If you learn anything about resin, resin will do what it wants to do. But resin is toxic. It can say um, low fumes on the bottle, all sorts of stuff, but it's a chemical. So just keep that in mind. 
I have resin on my hands, so don't I won't go touch my face. If you do get resin on your skin, you need to wash it off immediately. If you go to allogoods.com, there's a soap. It's a natural handmade soap. I think it's the calendula and oatmeal. It's amazing for taking resin off my hands. And I'll link that in the description as soon as I'm um, done with here, with this video. You want to use a respirator if you are not in a well-ventilated area. My room is well-ventilated. I have my windows open and I have the fan on. So keep, keep that in mind. Respirator is always recommended. And, and not a face mask, but a full-on respirator. Let me show you real quick. Um, right here. Here is mine. And I have a safety video I linked in this description. It has a link to this also. So um, just keep in mind, use caution, use common sense, and take care of yourself. Have fun with the art, but take care. Okay, I, this looks like it's mixed, so I'm going to set it aside. The work time is 30 minutes, Kendra. Thank you for asking. With this resin. Other resins will have different work times. But this resin, I've been using for a while, and I've had a lot of luck. I haven't had any weird yellowing. I have had no problem mixing. Which some resins you do, it's very hard to mix because no matter how close you get to the measurements, it's always, it doesn't cure right. So this one's great. Oh, work time, that means how much time you have to use the resin before it starts setting and getting gelled. All right, so now glass vase. Here is my insert for this. I covered it with plastic because it's a foam and I wanted to protect it a little longer. I just put it in. But can you see how it's kind of just wobbly in there? It's not sitting right. So it's because of the weight of the vase. So what I do, I just take a rag. I put it on the side here. And I put it in with this. And you're going to have to make sure it gets tucked in. So I did a terrible job of that right now. Sorry. <laughs> Let me tuck that little piece in. Now, see if I can do it. There we go. Now, see, it's not moving. This cloth is just going to help keep everything in place and it doesn't add a lot of weight because right now this is heavy so I'm going to put this in here and I'm just going to turn it on real quick make sure oh look there we go it's not hitting anywhere it looks pretty level turn it off for a moment now what I want to show you I'm not going to use the same colors as I did that red and blue vase right here. In case you're a little bit late, I'm going to make a version of this. So I'm going to use some brown colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some alcohol ink colors. I'm going to set it right here. This one is called caramel and I'm just going to test it real quick just so we see and it's always good just to test your colors even if you know what they are and these inks are by Adirondack uh, Tim Holtz these I think are older actually I think they have a new label now this one is butterscotch this one is latte so this is going to give us a good idea of the colors and we're going to make sure they're actually working in fluid because they are older. Ginger. Whoopsie. So that's our little test. Now to get the look. 
right here. I use dimensional paint. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to actually take this off real quick since I showed you how to do that. I'm going to get it's PBO. It's glass paint. It's called dimensional carne, or I'm going to say it wrong, Cerny Relief. This color is gold. On that glass vase I just did, it's called Rich Gold, which is now called King's Gold. And all I did is I freehand it. I'm going to make sure it's running. Because my last vase I forgot to make sure and it kind of spit out. But look, just goes out like that. So I'm going to push it up a little bit more. Okay. And don't worry, you're freehanding it. So it's not supposed to look perfect. So we're going to go like this. Hmm, this one is not working. Oh, you know why? That's right. I used this for another project, so the tip was real small. Hold on. I'm going to cut the tip so it's a little bit bigger. Because for that other gold, it's called rich gold. It's now called king's gold. There we go. Well. Isn't live video fun? You get the full effect of art. <laughs> okay. So now, there we go. We're just going to go ahead and use this one. Rich gold. I wanted to use the other one because there's more in the container. But you know what? We're just going to do it. So all I did here, and I just kind of drew whatever I wanted. And you see how I kind of got it's thicker and thinner in places? Just leave it. That's part of this effect. And that's why I love this vase. Because you're truly getting a handmade vase. Nothing that looks commercial or machine made. And just draw on the vase. Now you're going to need to let this dry 24 hours. And you can use templates. I do recommend if you've never drawn like this and you're not comfortable doodling, get a sketchbook, a piece of paper, and practice. Okay, so once we get our vase painted, you do need to let it sit for 24 hours. So I'm going to let it sit because I did one last night <laughs> and I did it a little different. I did squiggles and lines at the top. So now let's put this vase in here. Whoop, I'm going to put that part in first this time. And put it in. Yep, looks good. And then now we're going to put it in here. Make sure it's secure. I'm going to put this on. Running good. And this is cool. This little um, turner, every time you turn it on and off, it goes a different direction. So if you're doing projects that you do need to switch directions like that because maybe it's getting too lopsided then there it is very easily so i'm going to take a little tape because i see a little specks in here because i made a little mess and i'm just going to pull these out we're going to pull our trial paper out so what do you guys think so far 
Have you guys learned anything so far? Does this help you in any way? Got our resin in here. Just clear resin. We're going to turn this on. And now I'm going to pour it on here just a little bit. And the resin's going to fall into my tray. Any fall off. I'm going to take my hand and I'm just going to make sure being very careful with this area over here with where I have the paint. We just want to make sure the surface gets covered. And just go up and down. And, oh, thank you, Lindsay. I really appreciate your comment. Don't be afraid. If you've never tried a vase, try it with just resin and alcohol ink first and see how the ink reacts to the resin. Because with that vase that I did, the blue and red one, I actually had the blue here. I used red and then purple. And as it cures and turned, the blue moved down here. And pretty sure it's because the weight of the vase was kind of tilting it. And it just, it looks cool, but it wasn't what I was expecting the next day. And that's one of the fun parts of fluid art. Don't have expectations. You just have a process. You do it, go with it, and just have fun and appreciate the results. So I'm gonna clean my hands real quick. I got the resin covered. Looks like, oh, I missed a little spot right here, but that's okay. Now, I'm gonna take my colors. Now, obviously this is gonna be not as dramatic of a project as red and blue because we're using all the same color, just different shades and tones. But I'm very excited, I can't wait. So I'm just gonna drop the resin into here. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can turn it the other way. Oh, I'm not going. There, uh, it's not gonna turn the other way. Bummer. Okay, so this color was the ginger. And then this one is the latte. And right now I'm just getting some drops on here. You do want to be mindful you don't go too crazy with the color because you're supposed to use less than 5% color per resin. But I have not had a problem yet with the resin not curing using alcohol ink. And look how messy this looks. Isn't it awesome? And then look how it's just kind of blending. I'm going to pour some down here. And make sure you get the bottom cover too. And then this does take some time. So we do have our 30 minutes. And then this one, let's go. <laughs> Look how awesome. Look how awesome. What do you guys think? And I'm going to get a little more of this color up here. And then 
I do want to add a little gold, believe it or not. <laughs> this metallic gold alcohol ink, it's by Pinata. You do have to mix it up really well. Less is more because it will take over this whole thing within a heartbeat. But I would like just to get some, I usually do it around this base right here. And for whatever reason, as it cures, it tends to go everywhere. So it's a pretty awesome. But look, I'm just putting some drops. I don't know if you can see it in a second here when it turns around. Okay, now you can see it. Just those drops, look how much it's spreading. And that's okay. And it's, it's like it's pushing the other colors to the side. And then as it turns, it's breaking up. So I just added a big swig right there. I'm gonna add a few more drops of color and then I'm gonna add some resin, clear resin. Gold is one of my favorite colors to use with alcohol ink. White, believe it or not, is a heavy color with alcohol ink, and it'll actually push colors down further, deeper into projects. But white also changes the color, obviously, of the ink, so it's not my favorite. The gold, on the other hand, it does react with the other colors, but it also looks just simply amazing because of how it's reacting and it doesn't really change the colors. So I'm gonna add some clear on top just to see what happens. And I'm gonna add it into this gold to help it. And if you go with a left to right pattern up and down like this, you'll get a more consistent natural look towards the end when it's cured. If you're starting to do loops and spirals and stuff, that's when it can get a little messy. And now I'm just gonna pour the rest into here, my mold. Make sure my mold gets covered. I'm gonna do one more round of color because these colors are very transparent. They're not like my other one I did, but it's a different brand too. And I believe these are older colors, which is good. And here, gonna go like this. Get some more. Look at that. <laughs> I'm using too much alcohol ink. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just what I do. I'm going to drop some in here, too. If you decide to try this, I would love to see how it turns out. The easiest way to show me pictures is go to Paint Pour Academy Community Facebook group. Um, it's my group and you can post your images there. Or you can email me. Um, go to paintpouracademy.com. There's a contact page there. Oh, this is so cool. This is going to turn out great. I'm like super excited. So now I'm just going to pour more ink into my tray. And carefully. I'm going to, you know what I do a little different? I'm going to put some gold down here on the bottom. I haven't done this before, so I'm going to see what happens. 
Because we know gold takes over, so wouldn't it be cool to have a gold bottom? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens, right? We're experimenting and playing. And I'm going to drop a couple more colors into my tray. And I'm not real. I'm not gonna mix my tray with this holographic mold. Don't touch the bottom. It can scratch super easy. Okay. I think that is plenty. I probably overkilled it with as much alcohol ink as I'm using, but it was fun. <laughs> it is, huh, Kendra? It does. It does move, and it's just like so wild how this works. So this needs to cure 24 hours. So what I need to do is I'm gonna. Oh, I missed a little part in here with the resin. Oh, I need to very carefully. I'm gonna take my stick, not touch the bottom right here just make sure I fill my mold up needs to cure 24 hours so when I let it cure I learned this the hard way let me make some space you need to cover it so I have food tents and what I do I just cover what well, maybe it's this way yeah this way I cover it up and the reason why you cover it up is dust and flex will get in there. And let me turn it. <laughs> um, dust and flex will get in there, especially with the fan blowing, if you have any dust in your air system. Um, and we live in the desert, so it's a high dust area. Um, this food temp helps protect this from getting hairs, flakes, one time, probably six years ago, um, I had my art on my table. I was doing some canvas resin art. I had the door cracked. I didn't. I forgot to shut it all the way. And I went to bed. The next morning, <laughs> I saw hair on the side of it. My cat walked alongside of my art and it pulled her hair out. Um, she was okay. But you just want to be very mindful. Make sure your doors are shut. This is toxic to pets, to animals, humans. Just use common sense. Shut the door, cover it up. I'm going to let it spin 24 hours. I'm just going to leave it. I think my tray mold is going to do just fine. And uh, tomorrow evening it should be ready, or the next day I might even. Um, make a video to demold it to show it. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so you get a notification when I go post that video. So I hope this has helped you. I hope it has inspired you to get creative and do your own art. These are great gifts for uh, upcoming holiday season. Your family will be in awe. And it is. It's a handmade gift that you just can't beat. So Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.